Hello and welcome to the preliminary card here for Polaris 18, live from the ICC here in Newport, Wales. You are watching the preliminary card on YouTube before our main event up at 7 p.m. UK time, live and exclusive on UFC Fight Pass. My name is Josh Palmer. I'm joined Matt Side tonight by Tom Barlow and Dan Strauss, and we're going to go straight ahead, fire into introducing our prelim fighters. Here's our MC, Mr. Bidet Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the International Convention Center here in Newport, Wales for Polaris 18, an evening's entertainment of professional jiu-jitsu. Live on YouTube, we begin with your preliminary card. Please welcome your Polaris competitors. Introducing first, William Southern. Reese Davis. Jamie Dix, Finn Carey, Kate Bacic, Ashley Bendel, Owen Livesey, Max Bickerton, Tom Selamer, Ali Cole, Aled Reese, Ash Amos, Adam Atshed. And finally introducing Josh Williams. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we welcome our athletes for the preliminary card. Representing Pedro Bessa, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, William Southern. <laughs> from Flawless Combat Club from Wales, Reese Davis. Representing Drake from Wales, Jamie Diggs. <laughs> Representing Am Amos Martial Arts from Wales, Finn Keary. <laughs> Representing London Grapple and New Wave Academy, Kate Batchich. <laughs> Representing Drake from uh, Wales, Ashley Bendel. <laughs> Representing uh, Carlson Gracie from Hull, Owen Livesey. <laughs> Representing Apex Jiu-Jitsu, Max Bickerton. <laughs> Representing 10th Planet and Drake from the United States of America, Tom Salamir. <laughs> and representing Craig Ewers Academy from Wales, Ali Cole. Representing Pedro Bessa, BJJ from Wales, Aled Rees. And representing Amos Martial Arts from Wales, Ash Amos. Fighting out of factory BJJ, Adam Atshed. And finally representing Drake from Wales, Josh Williams. Ladies and gentlemen in attendance, please show your love for our preliminary card tonight. Make some noise. For the opening bounce at Polaris 18, join us again in just a few short moments after the break where we're going to get all seven of these preliminary bouts underway.
Well, welcome back to the preliminary fights here at Polaris 18. As you can see, the crowd here at the ICC Wales firmly starting to fill up here for our preliminary bouts. Coming up first, we're going to see William Southern taking on Rhys Davis. Let's go ahead and uh, head over to our MC, Mr. Bidet Johnson, for our introductions. Our first match this evening is in the welterweight division. Introducing first, standing 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighed in at 73.9 kilograms, representing Pedro Bessa BJJ from the United Kingdom, William Southern. representing Pedro Besa Academy from uh, just down the road in Bristol, just across the border into England. He's been training for about six years now and a very promising junior career so far, but quite a stage for him to step up to here in uh, one of his first super fight matches. And his opponent, standing 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighed in at 72.2 kilograms, representing Flawless Combat Club from Wales, Rhys Davis. And his opponent in this opening bout is Rhys Davis. He is 18 years old, representing Flawless Combat Club from right here in Newport, Wales. He's currently a blue belt, training for about three years. Picked up a couple of uh, smaller British titles in the, the early colored belt. Thinks he's going to try and work his guard game here. He's obviously got a couple of years on his opponent, but uh, size-wise, you've got to say, guys, they look fairly similar. Thank you to Jiu-Jitsu X for sponsoring the event here tonight, head over, check out their app for all your instructional needs. Josh Palmer, Tom Barlow and Dan Strauss on the call for you here. Thank you for joining us on YouTube for these preliminary bouts. And our referee, Oli Geddes, is going to get us underway here in the first bout. The white sleeves of the rash guard for Will Southern, the all black for Reese Davies. And he is looking to work that guard early here. Beautiful, almost jump over into a triangle armbar combination there. That's what you've got to love about these youngsters, right? Is they're just willing, they, they, nothing to lose, willing to go for anything. Yeah, it's great to see these kids coming up. You know, this guy's been training six years already, um, and we're starting to see this more and more on the circuit. Yeah, tries the jumping triangle there, but he's got to be careful of the regard here. We're already seeing, Tom, some inverted guard from uh, Reese Davis. Yeah, I mean, Reese is being forced to go upside down every time he comes over the top. Um, he's doing a good job of retaining his guard now. Yeah, Will's definitely looking to set up that, that jumping over the guard, that Davy Ramos style uh, arm bar or triangle set up there. You can see with his hand placement as he leads with that right arm, looking to get some control around the back of the neck possibly and jump over. And it can, you know, it, if you land it nicely, it can give you a guard pass potentially, but he does need to be careful about getting his legs entangled at the same time. You've got to say, Reese Davis doing a good job of, uh, you know, attacking the head a little bit here, trying to get some two-on-one grips, looking to go after a leg there. He is constantly moving forward from this seated position. Cartwheel guard pass goes a little bit awry. Yeah, it's been quite dynamic so far, and we're only a minute and a half into the match. Oh, to be 15 again. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. So just to remind you of the rules of the contest here, there's 10 minutes on the clock, and matches here at Polaris are scored in three separate periods of three minutes and 20 seconds each, but the clock will run continuously. The athletes will be scored uh, essentially a win or a loss for that period, and it's simple. You win two out of three, or you submit your opponent. Hopefully the idea is that they're forced to push the pace continuously. So at the moment, gents, two minutes through the first period, which way would you say the judges are going to be leaning? I personally think you've got to look at Williams being a bit more aggressive with his guard passing. He does look like he's getting his leg entangled. It's that backside 50-50, though. Yeah, this is the first row attack that we've seen from, uh, from Reese so far. But yeah, I've got to go with... Uh with William to begin with, you know, aggressive from the start, looking to jump over the guard, but. Do you think Reese should have had a bit more dynamism trying to come up there? There was an opportunity for him. You know, he looks very comfortable off his back now, and I think that we're gonna probably see him, you know, you know, we're two and a half minutes into this match and we're starting to see the styles of both of these athletes. It looks like Williams looking to jump over and get really dynamic with his passing or attacking from on top, whereas Reese looking to invert and maybe get on the legs looks like where he's a little bit more comfortable. Tom, yeah. it was a, a big leg drag possible there with the hip grip. 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, the problem with this style of like jumping over the guard is quite difficult to control, particularly in the Nogi. He just keeps getting deflected off the you know, the feet, the arms, the legs, so he's not able to get to a good controlling position. Yeah, that jumping over the guard attack works really well as a surprise. Once you've already thrown it three or four times, right. that you start to lose the element of surprise oh, a little bit. Seven or eight times. Oh, armbar here. Oh, nice. See, it's that Kimura grip and into the armbar this straight is away. Yeah, that was very, very quick. He's got a good pinch on the knees here. Real yeah. good bite on the head with that left leg as well as he looks to extend into the hip. Wow. Reese Davis is, well, oh, he's managed to pull his arm out there. He's going to roll into a leg entry here inside Sengaku if he can feed that right leg all the way through. That was about as close to being a finish with that arm bar as you can get. Just a lot of grit there to not submit to that. Yeah, it really was all about holding onto that grip for William there. And well, a lovely transition as well, straight into that inside Sankaku. Yeah, and, and right at the end of that first period. So I mm. think probably beyond a shadow of a doubt, uh, William Southern is going to take that first period on the judges' scorecards. Yeah, for sure. Let's see if Reese Davis can get something going from the bottom. He's found a couple of shin on shin entries, but he's never really been able to hold on. Yeah, he's just not able to get to that secure grip. Here he looks like he's coming up off the bottom a little bit more. Uh... They're going to hit a switch there. It's got to be careful of uh, head and arm. Yeah, just a little bit slow on the follow-ups in that, in that wrestle-up and in, in that sit-out. And he's got to be careful to defend the back here. He's essentially given up a guard pass now. Yeah, I mean, that was a nice transition there from, uh, from William as well, coming around. Oh, look at the flexibility of You can attack an armbar on the near side there. Yeah, well, he did enough to worry his opponent and force him to, to, to back off. Here, yeah, thinking about baiting that jump over the guard again. Yeah, and we just saw Reese just immediately fall back and bring those shins in, though, so he's very much aware of that mm. now. Cartwheel guard pass again from Southern. Yeah, interesting to see uh, William back out of that side control. Yeah, there was a little bit of an armbar attack there, but it wasn't really legitimate enough, in my opinion, to warrant backing out if he did. You know, he may be looking to back out so he can try and pass the guard again and sort of get a little bit more up on the scorecard. There we go, another. However, this, this time, that is locked in tight. Yeah, look He's at been there. looking at it from the get-go, and that is in really nicely. Switching to the triangle here. Yeah, this is a strong position. On the top, getting hold of all four limbs. He's going to try and extend the arm now. Yep. That is on. Davis is sitting, oh, big bite straight down. Davis sitting over the top. Wow. Good tenacity from him to stay locked in here. And it looks like he might be splitting the legs. But the triangle is still locked on. And that's the beauty of being in that armbar position, attacking the arm when you're already locked in the triangle is, yeah, you can stop the arm from being snapped, but you can't get out of that triangle that chokes on the entire time. Tom, talk us through the finishing yeah. mechanics here. I mean, it looks like at the moment, I was, oh, there it is. <laughs> Go ahead, talk us through the end of that one quickly, Tom. Uh, he just grabbed the head and pulled down, in all honesty. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like he was almost about to get out. The triangle looked like it was slipping, but he had been in that too, too deep and too long to, uh, yeah. to recover. Yeah. Really nice work from William Southern there. Jumping over the top over and over again, but eventually he got a really good bite of that. And uh, as you said, Dan, once he locked that triangle in, it was on from the start. Did the right thing in trying to hit the arm, went back to the triangle. Lovely work from a 15-year-old yeah. in this opening bout here. So let's take a look back at the replay of the finish here. Talk us through this one, gents. I mean, it's a lovely position that he's got. He's got that shin, holding it in nice and tight. I think this is the point where he looks to, uh, to pull down on the head and really increase that pressure and then get the submission there. Beautiful finish. Yeah, there was absolutely a moment, wasn't there, Dan, where it looked like when he went belly down, the legs might be coming apart. Yeah, what can happen there when that arm is extended and you go belly down is those legs start to open up a little bit, but he was able to lock it off and get that finish really nicely done. Let's go ahead and get the official result. This contest ended at 5 minutes 17 seconds. Declaring your winner by submission, William Southern! And makes up noise for Reese Davis. Let's take one last look at the first bout, the first submission of the night. Full recap of the fight. Well, the end of the fight here, you see that. Triangle entry, good angle has been cut. He abandoned the arm and went straight for a good old hold of the hips and a uh, hold of the head and lifted the hips and just too much pressure for Reese Davis in the end. He is forced to tap out and William Southern takes the first submission of the night.
straight into... We're going to jump straight into Jamie Dix and Finn Carey, but first, a quick word from our sponsors. The dream. Oh, well, I definitely want to be the most winningest American jiu-jitsu fighter of all time, right? It's everything I dreamt of it was true. I would love to win ADCC a couple of times. I would love to win the Nogi Worlds a couple more times, the Gi Worlds a couple times, World Pro, and just fight on amazing events. I want this. It's not I have to, how am I gonna do it? Oh my God, this person's so good. It's I want to. And so when I keep that mindset, not just in a competition, but every single day when I wake up, I want this, I want this, I want this. And if I keep doing this because I love it and I'm having fun and I'm dedicated and I'm resilient, then all those goals are gonna fall into place exactly when they're supposed to. My name is Kendall Reusing and I am a black belt under Gracie Baja. I am in Newport Beach, California. Welterweights coming up next. Tail of the tape for this one. Jamie Dix taking on Finn Carey. And there we see 20 years old. Takes on 18 years old. It is an all Welsh clash in this one. So a bit of local rivalry to look forward to. Live on YouTube, Polaris 18 continues with our second contest in the welterweight division. We introduce first, standing 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighed in at 75 kilograms even, representing Traig from Wales, Jamie Dix. So, first to the mat in this second bout is Jamie Dix. He's representing Team Drake, which is, of course, Chris Reese Academy and uh, the Williams brothers. You're going to see a lot of them on the card tonight. He's currently a brown belt, living in Swansea and teaching full-time. Been training about five and a half years. And, of course, his two main instructors are the Williams brothers and Mr. Chris Reese, who you can see in the corner. Now, introducing his opponent, standing 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighed in at 72.5 kilograms, representing Amos Martial Arts from Wales, Finn Carey. Oh, they're very happy, excited to be here, Finn Carey, clearly enjoying the moment. Obviously, being, uh, being as this event is here in Newport, Wales, we've got quite a few Welshman on the undercard. It's always nice for them to get a local matchup as well. Finn Carey representing Amos Martial Arts. Of course, Ash Amos himself is up in our sixth preliminary bout tonight in a heavyweight match. This young man is just 18 years old. I'm afraid I don't know much else about him apart from that, but uh, we'll see what he can do against what I believe is a pretty active guard for Jamie Dix. Thank you to Made for Fighters for sponsoring the event here tonight. Visit them for all of your fight wear needs. Your referee for this second preliminary bout is Greg Creel. Ready? 
10 minutes on the clock. Red sleeves of the rash guard for Finn Carey immediately looking to go underneath and work to the back. He's got a leg entry straight away here, but counter leg lock attempt from Jamie Dix in the uh, Welsh Dragon rash guard. Yeah, I mean, Jamie Dix was super calm in that entry and then immediately he started to capitalize on it as well. Yeah, but well they found themselves in 50-50 here and he's looking for an inside heel hook immediately. Oh, and that's a dangerous, dangerous attempt to vault out. Still caught that knee line well and truly trapped. It looked like Finn was trying to invert out of that as well for a few, for a moment. Well, we can hear the corner of Jamie Dix calling for him to control and attack that second leg at the moment. But of course, 50-50, you've got to be careful of uh, your own legs in this one as uh, Dix tries to come up on top here. And we're going to have an interesting X entry to the back, potentially up into a leg drag maybe. Now rolling through to try and crab ride to the back. Yeah, Kiri's really using that uh, crab ride and the inversions very, very well to stay out of these entanglements. Yeah, it's a beautiful leg drag entry here. Trying to get behind the hip there, strip those frames off, but those long limbs of Jamie Dix finding a way back inside. It looks like he's attacking in the steamer lock there mm. just briefly as well. Just couldn't get the control on the hips for that leg drag to create the pass though. Now, would you say uh, either of these gentlemen was in a particular amount of danger in that opening scramble? It was quite, quite fast paced. It was tough to say, in all honesty. I feel like uh, uh, Jamie Dix had a better bite on one of the leg entanglements. Yeah, for sure. That hill hook, you know, um, his opponent definitely had to actively move quite aggressively to try and escape that. But so far, just both of them throwing up the attacks the entire time. Yeah. Again, we can see Carey trying to invert and get those uh, shins into the back of the kneecap so he can ride up to the back or up to a leg drag. Looking to use a straight footlock grip here. Yeah, I mean, he, the, the, he could get pulled into knee bars and various different leg entanglements from that crab ride, but he's doing a great job of keeping his knee line free at the moment. Yeah, you can see there just turning that left knee outwards so he doesn't have to worry too much about having control. But he's going shotgun footlock grip here as he bridges in, feet on the hip. And Jamie Dix doesn't look bothered at all. It's little a bit strong wary position, there, though. though. Yeah, he's got to be careful that he might give up the back. That head and arm position can be used from there. Yeah, it's horrible, isn't it, when you get, uh, you, you get crushed up in that position with that... Uh, that grip, but he frees himself well enough and straight back into the knee cut, into the reverse De La Hiva is Jamie Dix. That marks the end of the first round now. You've got to say, uh, Jamie Dix so far. Well, he got another, got another uh, 40 seconds or so to try and win something off the back of this first round. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm not, I'm not, you know, Jamie Dix seems very, very calm in these positions. Uh, it seems like Finn's maybe a little bit more aggressive on top. That's actually a really tough period to score now that I think mm. about it. I mean, your judges for this one are, of course, the UFC analyst Dan Hardy, and then uh, noted UK black belts Andy Roberts and Neil Williams. Jamie Dix has got into a very deep knee slide here, though. This is, uh, you know, we're going to see uh, Ash Williams later. This is something we see him do a lot. He's got that great head and arm control, sliding his leg through. I mean, that really is, you know, the name of the game in passing Nogi, isn't it? You really need such a strong control in order to pass slowly and methodically because everybody's so fast at scrambling these days. Yeah, I mean, Finn was doing a, a trying to just step on him and control the distance, but couldn't control. Yeah, he secured that guard pass now. Really nice side control. Still got that tight upper body control. It's going to be interesting to see if he wants to try and work that far side elbow a little bit higher, potentially think about going to a head and arm potentially from here. You can see that. Yeah. So he's starting to rise it up. There we go. Bringing the head round to the other side. It's, it's so tempting when you have such strong upper body control to try and turn that into an immediate attack. Yeah, he doesn't want to let that go for love nor money, but uh, good repummel of that right arm from Finn Carey. He's going to try and work something from half guard here. Yeah, he's got to be a little bit careful of. Jamie Dix looks like he's turning into like a front headlock, like a potential DAS situation. Yeah, Finn brought that arm through to try and sit up, and this is a strong position. Yeah, it was almost into a Peruvian actually. It was yeah. very far, close. Far on the back of the head. Again, trying to come up with good, heavy top pressure. He's going to give up a leg entry here, though. Good work by Finn to get back to a, uh, uh, an attacking position in his guard right now. We've already seen that he really favors these leg attacks. Yeah, he just can't quite get the extension away in this X guard. He's trying, though. Goes uh, to 50-50. Well, not quite 50 He's trying to go to, it looks like, outside Ashy he's yep. looking for. But this could... Look, look at the long legs posting out mm. from Jamie Dix. What a huge frame. Yeah, I mean, he does look quite a lot larger than, uh, than Finn, in all honesty. Yeah, Walter Waite contest, this one. Okay, he's passed it over into 50-50 now. So this is a lot better for Finn if he can control this. Well, going up... Uh, Looks like he's going to switch around to a knee boy here, potentially. Yeah. 
tactics. It looks like he's on his own leg attack. All the rage that heel pull up by the uh, up by the neck now, but uh, again into 50-50. And to be fair to both of them, they've been very active attacking in 50-50 here. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that was that uh, like outside ashy position that um, Lachlan Giles became known for, where he step across the body in the 50-50. Well, this is a pretty significant attack for Finn Carey. He forced a defensive roll three or four times from Jamie Dix here as they find towards the edge of the match. Twist and footlock attempt here. Yeah, past the uh, halfway point. Big toe hold coming in from Jamie Dix. And a heel hook in return. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd rather have the heel hook. <laughs> Well, yeah, he's let go of the attack. Got to be careful at the edge of the mat here. Our referee's going to stop and try and re-establish position in the middle, which is... Uh, I no think you've got to feet. pull him in. You have to pull him in in this situation. Could uh, be a two-man pull as well. <laughs> well, they're opting to... Uh, good sportsmanship to roll, maintain the position. And immediately shucking the leg free is Finn Carey. Yeah, Finn able to get this top position now, but immediately back into another leg entanglement here. Yeah, this is a much bigger straight foot look attempt, but you can see he lost the purchase on the uh, on the hip, just wasn't able to keep the frame. And again, he's going to crab ride here. Yeah, I mean, that was a, a copy of, of the uh, uh, one of Finn's attacks earlier, where he went for the straight foot lock and then almost ended up on the back. Did you almost feel like they have quite similar games? Mm. Yeah, very much so. It's great to see them like combining those laser attack with the back attacks and the various passes as well. It's been much more dynamic than we used to see a while ago, where guys were only focused on the legs. Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of criticism to these leg lock battles sometimes, where you just see two guys in a very static position switching between various leg locks. But we're seeing, like you said, so much more dynamism in this as they're tr actually using those leg lock entries to transition to different positions, and then those legs being caught back and entangled again. Certainly a lot more exciting. Okay, okay through, the, through the second period here, so judges are going to have to have decided uh, two of the rounds so far. Any initial thoughts, gents? I mean, it, t to me, it looks like Finn has, uh, has had the better of this kind of second part of this round, although he was in that very, you know, he, he did get passed. So it's very interesting to see how they score this. Again, he's digging on that heel. Yeah, again, toe hold versus heel hook. Neither one of them really giving an inch on the, uh, on the face to suggest which one had the upper hand, but they're gonna reset fully in the middle now. 2.25 left on the clock. Good appreciation from the crowd here at the ICC Wales. Yeah, I mean, neither guy was hobbling, so clearly they weren't that tight foot locks, <laughs> leg lock attacks. <laughs> Big knee cut attempt from Dix here. Yeah, Finn just using that shin to defend it and looking to invert and go towards the back again. Very nice. Yeah, almost going to come to a technical stand-up, but ops to feed the leg. Again, he's going to go for same, his heel pull, yeah. perhaps. This is the same attack that we saw him go for earlier. You can see Dix trying to carry the weight up onto him, but now he's going to try and unlock the legs himself. Toe hold again. Yeah, I mean, Dix is favoring this toe hold over the heel hooks. Well, one thing that the toe holds do have on their side is that they are very dramatic. They look impressive, even if they're not really on. So from the judge's eyes, you know, the, 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 the heel hook can look, you know, unless there's a big movement in the knee, the heel hook is very subtle. So actually, when, you, when we've seen a few positions where... Uh, where Finn's been in that heel hook and Jamie's had that twist in footlock, it looks like Jamie's in a much stronger position even though that didn't get the tap. Yeah, so unless the heel hook forces a big roll exactly, in defense, yeah. it's, uh, as you say, somewhat more subtle. So potentially a, a, a bit of gamesmanship there, a bit of strategy. Final minute for this second preliminary bout. This has been much the story. It's been an exchange of leg attacks and back take attempts, a lot of 50-50, a lot of single leg X. Yeah, I mean, very, very even overall, in my opinion. Yeah, it re really has been. I mean, it's no, been no. It's too close, like too close to call. Again, we see this shot down, shotgun footlock almost going towards the back by Dix as well. Kerry's really scrambling to get that knee line back. Is there anything about the leg length of Dix that's helping or hindering him in these entanglements? It doesn't seem to be, in all honesty. Both guys just can't quite get the control they need to, to get a good bite and a good finish. You've got to feel that in some of these uh, exchanges where he's seeing the opportunity to potentially do that technical stand-up sweep, but instead opting to go for the legs. This late in the fight, a sweep could be really significant in the judges' in the judges' yeah. eyes, and these leg lock attempts so far aren't really paying dividends. It looks like but. he's diving towards a triangle here oh, as well. Oh, come on, on the yeah, far yeah. side yeah. with, with the, the Kimura as well. 
That's a nice way to end the round, eh? That's true. He's going to run out of time to do anything meaningful with it, I suspect. But oh, well, there he gets the triangle right at the end. I would have loved an extra 15 seconds and a wry smile from Finn Carey. He knows that uh, perhaps there was skin of your teeth uh, getting out of that one. Yeah, very interesting match. Super close. Both guys using some lovely, uh, lovely entanglements, a lot of passing, a lot of transitions as well. So the judges' scorecards are being collated. Let's take a quick look back at the uh, replay at the end of the fight. It's a very nice transition into that triangle. Set it up with a kind of a knee slide position, then slot his leg around the side. Use that Kimura grip to stabilize. And freed his feet and set up a more traditional triangle position. Beautiful. Yeah, really, really clean entry, I have to say. The, the position itself came on very, very quickly from what looked to be a bit more neutral, but uh, it's going to go to the judges' scorecards. Let's go ahead and find out which of these young men is going to be victorious. This contest goes to distance 10 minutes, and we go to your judges for the decision. All see three seeing the bout the same in favor of your winner by unanimous decision, Jamie Dix. So Jamie Dix notches up the first win for Team Drag here at Polaris 18. Five more of his teammates on the card uh, between the preliminary and the main card coming up a little bit later. Gents, closing thoughts on uh, that outcome? Oh, it's a very, very close fight. Um, I can see why they gave it to uh, Jamie. You know, really good performance and got those passes. Yeah, I think if you look at the match overall, I think uh, Jamie did have the better. You know, very, very even with those leg lock attempts, but Jamie did have the positional dominance, I think. And with that guard pass, I think that was the correct decision. Yeah, the guard pass and, of course, the uh, the triangle at the end as well. Uh, lots more to look forward to. Still got five more preliminary bouts coming your way. Quick word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back here at the ICC Wales. Tell the tape for our next bout here on our preliminary card. It is a ladies bantam weight bout. Kate Bassett, purple belt representing London Grapple and New Wave Academy, taking on Welsh black belt Ashley Bendel. Let's go ahead and get this one started with our MC, Bidet Johnson. We continue now in the bantam weight division, introducing first at five feet, seven inches tall, and weighed in at 59 kilograms even, representing London Grapple and New Wave Academy, 
Kate Batchich. Some deep breaths as she enters the arena here. Kate Batchett's 28 years old, representing London Grapple and New Wave Academy. Of course, London Grapple, a newer academy set up by uh, prolific competitor Ross Nichols. I think Jed Hugh, who of course is up in our co-main event later tonight, is also going to be cornering her this evening. She is an MMA fighter as well, born in Poland, but uh, lives in the UK. He's been training jiu-jitsu for about five years now. And introducing her opponent, standing five feet four inches tall and weighed in at 56 kilograms even, representing Drake from Wales, Ashley Bendel. Now, a very uh, confident and focused Ashley Bendel here. Four years the junior of her opponent. She's 24 years old, and she is a black belt from Team Drag. Representing uh, also Chris Reeves Academy, of course. She is from just down the road in Swansea, Wales, and is a full-time jiu-jitsu coach. Has been training for most of her life, she told us. She's picked up... Uh, European no-gi championship, a couple of medals at uh, the gi Euros, a silver ADCC trials. Really big in pressure passing and guard passing, so let's see if uh, Kate Batchett is going to accept a bottom position here. I have a feeling she might not, but uh, let's see. Thanks to Scramble for sponsoring tonight's event. Make sure you head over, check out their Black Friday sale, up to 40% off all of their Excellent fight wear and athletic apparel. Fight. Referee Oli Geddes gets this one underway. Blue for Batic and uh, the Welsh Dragon rash guard for Ashley Bendel, who is straight into a leg entanglement here, looking to hip in heavy as she switches the leg over. Yeah, we're back into that 50-50 that we saw a lot of in the previous match. And Ashley's digging for that heel. Yeah, trying to keep that knee line drug through here. Bacic manages to pull the leg free. She's going to look to scramble and wrestle up here. And then she does, steps that left staple over. Now she's going to go toe hold from the top. A little bit loose though. Mm, a little bit high on the foot there. Yeah, and Ashley could be into a good entanglement here on this uh, leg or potentially use it to pass as well. Right, if she can free her left foot, she's got uh, an inside triangle leg entry just sitting right there, but the long legs of Bacic trying to cause her some worries, and it's a lovely step over the bounce there to counter what was a fairly slow wrestle up from Bacic. Yeah, it was a very smooth little step over as well. Well, a lot of time to work. Ashley Bendel is going to have Fight. a full mount position here and immediately goes head and arm looking to work that up. Looks trying like she's setting up the, uh, the rear naked choke grip as well. Yeah, she's in a head and arm position now. You know, one thing I've known about Ash for ages, and one thing everyone's always told me about her, she has unbelievable top pressure and control for someone so small. And I think that's what we're seeing here, a very, very strong mount position. Uh, let's see what she can do with it. She did say that pressure passing was one of her favorite things, but she's uh, staying very heavy in the hips here, looking to see those feet ride up and check the hips briefly, but she's not gonna let this head and arm grip go. Yeah, that's a strong position. The pressure's gonna be on here. Yeah, let's see if she can get the transition, though. Well, she gets regarded and Very is forced to done. give it up. Yeah, it's always that, that moment, isn't it, when you try and step over, you try and leave the mount position. She yep. just got caught sleeping, but uh, straight, straight back, back into back mount. To mount. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, finding no real uh, no real respite in that brief half guard was Batic. Yeah, Got to defend the back now. She's giving up the back as she uh, tried to escape as well. Yeah, you know, this is, this is a... It's a very risky, desperate attempt to escape from a mount position when you don't feel like you can escape from the position in a traditional way. Then you think, okay, maybe my back escape may be stronger, but in doing so, you allow your opponent into the strongest position in grappling. So we're gonna see whether this pays off or not. Into a body triangle here, very, very strong position. This is gonna be all about fighting the grip. And you know, something that we see a lot these days um, is won't even bother trying to actually get that forearm underneath the right, neck. Right, just crank the face. If you can get, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Anything, the mandible strangle. Yeah. yeah. Everything's legit once you give it a name, right? Right, for sure. So cross grip here. She's going to try and turn that 
wrist down. It's a good scramble for Very Bashic, nicely done. but she's, she's got to block that hook. She does manage to do it. It looked for a second there that she needs to Ash was going to get it back through, but Kate manages to block it. She's in a good position now. She can't allow these feet to come back in that easily, though. Yeah, don't allow that second hook to come through and turn in. You've got to prioritize not allowing that second hook in. Once that second hook is in, your opponent is attached right. onto those hips. Just a little more urgency in that seated position to keep the scramble going would have perhaps served her very well, but... Uh... Yeah, invest the output here. You know, working hard for a couple of seconds to get out of this bat position is going to make it a lot easier to not be submitted when the opponent manages to stay there. Yeah, I mean, she's done a good job of getting back to some kind of guard. This isn't obviously the best position that she can be in. Her hips are smashed over to the side, but at least she's not in any immediate danger from here. Yeah, it's uh, uncomfortable, but uh, if she can get her frames working, try and create some separation, she can perhaps find some space, but as you can see, such a heavy hip smash. You know, this is what, what I was saying, that Ash is known for this aggressive, heavy top pressure, and from here, this this sort of reversed half guard position where you're, you're, you're stalling the person's leg, but you're not actually in a position to do anything with it. Eventually, those legs are gonna open, Ash's leg is gonna extend out, and she's gonna be able to go straight to side control. It looks like Ash has already passed her foot over the top, so she's pretty much free from this position. There now. we go. Yeah. Yeah, and straight, straight to go to mount. mount. Yeah, I honestly thought she was going to take side control there, but straight to mount, looking to work the head and arm. There's a little bit of framing defense in from Bacic, but not a lot. And again, she gives the back up. Mm. Yeah, I mean, all of this is going to be slapping on Bacic. She's going to be getting yeah. more and more oh, tired. Yeah, that explosion is going to be getting less and less. And, 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 you know, she wants to work off of her back. If she wants Ooh, to attack the legs and stuff like that that we saw her doing earlier, she's got to be more active with the hips off of her back. You know, the, the three easy mount attempts we've, or mount takes that we've seen so far. Kate's got to make sure that she's getting those legs on the inside to try and stop uh, Ash from being able to do that. Yeah, I mean, I will say Bendel has done an excellent job of, of not really giving an inch. She's constantly looking to re-attack and, and constantly looking to, to keep the pressure going forward. And as you've both rightly said, that is going to absolutely sap the gas tank of Kate Batchett. Sulu of stretch, perhaps, coming in here? Just for a moment. Kate looking to uh, shrug... Ash off the top here. She's got to be careful of Those Ash switching into an arm bar yeah. or a triangle from this position. But in terms of the back, she's pretty much out. We see an arm well, bar yeah. attempt here on that. Let's see if she can get left it. There, arm. there is a frame in, but again, she capitulates. And now it's a done. chance that she, she can come up to the back, rolling back escape attempt from Vendel. And it was right at the edge of the mat. A little unfortunate for Batchets, perhaps. I mean, that's what you were talking about earlier, Dan, with the continuing mm. to keep trying to that escape and not just. I'm now in a turtle, I'm going to stop here. It's getting the full out position and keep scrambling. Yeah. Past the halfway point of this one, no uh, prizes for guessing who's probably on the, head on the judges' scorecard so far. It's going to be Ashley Bendel, who's had by far and away the better of the dominant positions. And she's wrestling hard on this single here, trying to pull that leg through as she cuts the angle. Yeah, Kimura grip on that far side from Cape, but they find their way off the mat. I wonder if they're going to restart in the same position in the center, because it's such an interesting position there where someone's wrestling. Right. They're on that leg, their person's on the back, but you have that Kimura grip, they're restarting from standing, and Ash so comfortable to uh, start on her back and use her attacks to try and get back to a top position. Quite a heavy head post from Bacic there, looking to pass here, and uh, Bendel already swept a couple of times from this position. Yeah, I mean, she definitely shouldn't go onto the bottom. That wouldn't be the thing that I would uh, advise her as a coach to do. Well, backside 50-50 you know. roll through here. You know, but if, if the strategy is to attack the legs, you can't do that from on top. And, you know, what we've seen from Ash so far is just far superior in this top position. So I think on paper, you, you know, or, or watching this match rather, you've got to say Kate actually wants to be staying on top, not be put back into this, you know, probably going to end I up mean, underneath Mount again and maybe yeah. have her back taken again. But if that's the game plan to go for leg locks, then how else do you do it? Yeah, I mean, uh, this is an unfortunate position with her longer arms, trying to tricep press to make a frame mm. from this kind of stuck position with your elbows high and exposed is... It's just not a strong position to create defensive frames from. So, see if uh, we see a fast mount take again here. Well, she's got it's got to be control. active with those hips. She's got to be active if she feels any space at all because there we go. Oh. That's a lot better. Yeah, yeah, she's blocked it. Let's see if she can keep scrambling here, though. Yeah, she definitely needs to keep moving. She's keeping those hips quite elevated. Yep, nice work from Kate to shrug Ash, oh, but again, onto work. that back, one hook in. Yeah, hopped over the top. We're into the third and final period here, and... Very interesting position There's here. An arm She's got a there. big arm attack. Yeah, this is a terrible position if that arm's still there. Nice spin through, back into her guard. You know, you've got to hand it to Kate that the escapes from all of these very deep positions is, is very, very effective. She's doing a great job at it, but just not able to get any of her own attacks so off. She yeah, can't the, find pressure, her own offense. the pressure of, of, of Bendel is just 
incredible. Yeah. I mean, Bendel just forced that leg through there, just dragged it across. Yeah, again, and it's gone it's head and arm. Head and arm control. It's the hips smashed and turned over. You know, you put the hips to the side, bang those knees together, and easy guard pass again. It's going to be a very simple reset this time for our referee, Oli Geddes. Yeah, Kate's got to do what she did last time, which is not allow Ash that fast mount take. I mean, it, it goes without saying that, uh, yeah. you know, Kate Bashic has, has got to find she a submission to in, in the next minute and 45 seconds. Yeah, she was looking for a boogie chuck there, it looked like. And again, trying to create a frame. She's going to give up the mount. Expect to see her look to give the back up again to try and escape this. We're seeing this pattern here. Well, she's been yeah. gift wrapped. Can't quite tell. No, it looks like both of her arms are still free. She's got the underhook uh, controlling the wrist. And there you go. Going to the head again. She's going to try and pull Ashley Bendel all the way again. off the top of her, but not able she to. Has to be careful of where her arms are. Because when you do that, when you try and get that person off the top, their legs pass through that upper body position. And if your arms are exposed, they can latch onto one of them. Yeah, this is a stronger back position now. Still trying to work for that entry onto the neck. Again, she's got to go double unders here to try and stay attached. And it's a good shake from uh, from uh, Bacic. Let's see if switch into an arm bar here. Yeah, that's really her only option uh, yep. when she starts falling off this, this succinctly. But the, the, the beauty of actually taking this Kimura grip that you can take the arm bar from is that you can use it to retake the back if you lose the back position. You can then attack that Kimura grip, attack the arm bar, and then get back into it because that Kimura grip allows you to get your body well, back onto your opponent's back. Yeah, there's the uh, attempt to get the It's very arm. loose. It, it does look a bit very loose. loose. Yeah, you can see Kate's already kneeling on that leg as yeah. well. Take the pressure off the elbow a little bit. 25 seconds left, and again, again. she's going for broke on her. A footlock attempt here, but it, it all looks very loose in terms yeah. of the control position. You can see Ashley immediately coming up, and the same thing that we saw before, she's trying to reach around towards the back. Yeah, you see that left hand up on the shoulder, trying to pull herself through, and if she connects upper body, it's probably game over. But I think this one is going to be all wrapped and done. It's going to be a judge's decision win for Ashley Bendel. Rather undoubtedly, I think, an excellent performance from the 24-year-old Welsh black belt. Let's have a look at some of the replays from that bout, and it really was a heavy, heavy top game from Ashley Pendle. Yeah, and, and sort of the, the entire 10 minute match kind of looked like this. It was guard pass, mount, back, shrugged off the back, back to guard, you know, get into a top position, mount again, back again, and I think that was three, four, five cycles of that. Yeah, absolutely. Ashley just did great top pressure throughout, and um, really, Kate couldn't get her game going. No, she was firmly on the defensive for uh, all 10 minutes of that power. She did have a couple of attempts at some, some leg attacks, but never really uh, getting to any conclusive controlling position to allow them to be considered meaningful on the judges' scorecards. But let's go ahead and uh, get what I'm sure will be the hand raised of Ashley Bendel. This contest goes to distance. 10 minutes and we go to your judges for the decision with all three seeing the bout the same in favor of your winner, Ashley Bendel. No surprises there, Team Drag picks up their second win of the night. Flawless so far, that's Ashley Bendel victorious in our third preliminary bout. Let's go ahead and have a quick word from our sponsors before we move on to the light heavyweight division.
So our fourth preliminary bout here at Polaris 18. Tell the tape is Owen Live Z taking on Max Bickerton in a 90 kilo light heavyweight bout. Lots to look forward to in this one. Let's go ahead and get our official introductions from Bade Johnson. Polaris 18 live on YouTube is now set for 10 minutes in the light heavyweight division. We introduce first, standing five feet nine inches tall and weighed in at 89.5 kilograms, representing Carlson Gracie from Hall Owen Livesey. Owen Livesey looking uh, very much ready for uh, some tough engagements here. 30 years old, he is the head instructor at Carlson Gracie Hull, currently a brown belt, originally from St. Helens, which is up in uh, the same neck of the woods. If you're not familiar with UK geography, uh, he's been training for well over 20 years, was a Commonwealth Games judo champion and a six-time national champion in judo as well. Has made the very successful transition to grappling, but uh, for good reason believes his stand-up and his pressure and that kind of impetus that uh, competitive judo gives you is going to be his edge here. And introducing his opponent, standing six feet two inches tall and weighed in at 88.5 kilograms, representing Apex Jiu-Jitsu from the United Kingdom, Max Biggerton. And his opponent for this bout is Max Biggerton, the 28 years old. Well, 28 year old, sorry, is representing Apex Jiu Jitsu. Not hugely familiar with him uh, in the rest of his career, I'm afraid to say. Definitely a slightly different uh, appearance and demeanor to his opponent tonight. Coming in with the spats on, so perhaps we're going to see a bit of guard playing from him versus what's very clearly going to be an aggressive <laughs> top pressure game from Owen Livesey. Your referee for this one is Greg Creel. Thanks to Salachi LLP for sponsoring this bout and several of our others tonight. No surprise to see Max immediately pulling guard, wants none of the wrestling or judo pedigree of <laughs> Owen Livesley. I, I'm not sure if you've watched any of his recent grappling matches. This guy... Rather aggressive. <laughs> it just that, that He is throwing people around. You know, it is just so cool to see. Um, you know, you, you see a lot of good wrestlers and good judo guys doing grappling shows, but able to translate that over as well as him. Very, very rare. Well, he was trying to body lock pass into a cradle there, and he's pummeling for dominant grips here, but it's good work so far from Bickerton in this guard position. Yeah, you mentioned, uh, Josh, that, that Max isn't a particularly well-known grappler, but you know he's sort of a, a, a quiet guy, but he is a very, very legit grappler. You know, he's someone who's training in London. He's getting the training with some of the best guys in the country. Uh, he's been training hard for a long time, does a lot of tournaments, and has done well at Brown and Black Belt. So forever I called to see him a relatively late replacement um, tonight, but very excited to see him. Uh, yeah, Apex is his, uh, is, is his own gym. Ah, OK. Good to know. Yeah, it's, uh, Max is someone I've heard recently about and been doing very, very well in like a lot of the local tournaments, as, yep. uh, as um, Dan said. 
And he's actually had some, some success at Black Belt, I believe, as well. Just before we had all the, the, the pandemic things, he was uh, so entering some of the RBGF competitions and, and meddling at Black Belt. So definitely no slouch on the ground. Yeah, absolutely. Looking to work some closed guard here, looking to scoop under the legs. He's been looking for some two-on-one grips as well. And Lose trying to stay very big and very broad and very tall in this closed guard posture. Yeah, closed guard is something that you don't see a huge amount of in no gi. Um, obviously, one of the biggest differences between gi and no gi is the guard position, your inability to truly break and control posture by grabbing onto the lapels. Um, it's a position that is very, very difficult to get out of if your opponent doesn't want to let you out, and also very difficult to do anything if you're underneath, if the opponent wants to stall on top. So, you know, if, if neither man is is willing to open up like Max has just done here, then it can be a bit of a static position. So good to see Max willing to open up uh, if he sees the opportunity to do something. Oh, and looking to roll over the top again for a cradle. Yeah, I mean, he's doing a great job on top. It might not be a bad option for Max to play that close guard a little bit, maybe try and feel out Owen, um, you know, see what that, that, that wrestling judo feels like, you know, because it yeah, is I, very, very different. I, I, honestly, never um, I honestly thought Livesy had managed to block the hip there in that guard pass and was perhaps going to be able to to push the head away and, and put him back to his shoulders. But uh, there's a good bit of regarding from Bickerton. Yeah, if you do see Owen pass the guard, then expect to see some very nasty top pressure. He plays almost a catch wrestling style of, of, of grappling there, where you might see him look to go for something like a chest compression, uh, you know, Josh Barnett special. Yeah, I imagine a lot of cranking on the neck and a lot of uh, yanking on the shoulders. <laughs> Why not? Again, Bickerton looking to work this closed guard here. The guard's open now, though, and Livesy backs out. He can't uh, take too many steps away, though. Our refs have been pretty hot uh, tonight on re-engaging. Diving on that neck again. If you can get a good chin strap, it's a great position to start working oh, from. Beautiful single hook sweep from Bickerton, and he's got good head and arm control as he looks to pass the hips. Yeah, so this is something that we, we can expect to see. Owen is not going to look to fight off of his back. He's going to look to stand up. And here's the thing. He wants Max to stand with him. And if someone isn't willing to stand with you, if they're only going to pull guard, then how do you get them to stand with you? Well, you stand up when they're on top. Max this is on guillotine that next, position yeah, looks yeah. pretty strong. Well, he had a good head and arm, uh, or arm in guillotine, rather. And it was... It was probably, as you said, Dan, a very good decision to try and collapse back to a guard position. Hundred percent, absolutely. Because you know, as soon as there'd been the slightest bit of separation, you think Livesy would have jumped on uh, some form of entry. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, like sweeps, pretty much are just wrestling up from the bottom in nogi, and that's yeah. really what uh, what Owen is known for. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, ni nice exchange there from uh, from Max. And did that come at the end of the last period as well? Yeah, I didn't quite have an eye on the time. It was very, very close. Uh, probably just over into the second, though. So let's Not see some half guard work here from Bickerton, and he's going to get uh, a summary frame to the face for his trouble. Yeah, he was trying that, uh, I believe it's called a John, John Wayne sweep. Could you explain the etymology of that? No. <laughs> okay. No, no. So looking to try and frame on the hip there. You expect Livesy perhaps to turn that right hip down to the mat when he cradles the head. Yeah. Exactly. I, I think that's something that he's almost waiting for Max to do, look to turn in and then get that overhook position, cradle, and then use that to try and pass. But, you know, Ma Ma Max knows what he's doing from this position. Well, he's got a good connection here, head and arm, big squeeze of the shoulder into the side of the jaw, and he's going to try and keep that head yeah. turned. This is all going to be, this is all going to come down to timing. There's going to be a split second where Owen is going to see the opportunity to get the pass, and in that split second, it's potential that Max could also get the sweep, so it's all going to come down to who has better timing. Yeah, I mean, Owen's doing a great job of blocking the hips as well, of blocking Max getting back to the guard. You see him keep turning the hips towards him. Um, like, here he's more in that, that reach around, going for that chin strap type position. He's doing a good job. Got, oh, got to be down. careful yeah, here. Gets that tricep trapped across the body. Does a good job of recovering, though. Yeah, very nicely done. Because what you can do, you can use that cross face position with that arm uh, trapped across the yeah, body to a... open up the spine, twist the body in the opposite direction, and get that pass. I mean, you can't just straight up crank choke them from there as well. Looks, looks like a pass is here. This yeah. is where Iron wants to be. Max really fighting as hard as he can to not allow Max to keep the, the to, sorry to keep Owen that side control position and manages to find his way back, not just the half guard, but with an underhook on the near side. Yeah, He's going to he try and shuffle out to the back here. That's it, if he can get on his right hip, keep inching out bit by bit. 
He's yeah. going gonna, gonna to have to fight what I imagine from uh, the Commonwealth Judo Champion yeah. will be a very strong <laughs> Kezuka's army. Well, that's it. He has to be very careful as he opens these legs because Owen is more than happy to pass straight into this Kezuka's army position here. This is go. one of his strongest positions. Yeah, he's going to try and get the submission from here. So you can see he's posting on that left leg. He's got a big hip Max extension. Is on his side. big crank. Max is on his side, which is a good position to be in. You don't want to be flat on your back here. So he's doing the best thing that he can, but it all comes down to the power, the strength, and the muscular endurance of the judo man on yeah, top. And this is, you know, this is a position in, oh, and beautifully done. work from Bickerton. I mean, that's a position that in judo, you know, you only have to hold for several seconds to score that epon on the ground. Well, and it's 30 seconds if you're holding for, I feel, believe it is anyway. Yeah, that's a long that's a time. Long time. You've got, you got the gi friction. It's you know, still a long time, it's Josh. It's still a really long time, Josh. <laughs> You guys pretend like you never see it happen, <laughs> but, but you certainly you do. You definitely do, but that's, I mean, if you've never had someone use that Kezugatami who's at that Commonwealth oh, Games level, it is brutal. utterly brutal. Mm -hmm. You know, and Owen did a great job of surviving that, yeah. getting on his side. You can see it took some of out of him when he uh, when he reset. Yeah, heavy but breaths from Bickerton as we move into uh, 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 the third and final period. I mean, that that transition here, he would have that would have been everything in his power. As soon as Owen passed, Max was determined to stop him from being able to get the side control, manages to get back to that half guard position. Owen passes into his signature position, that Kezakatami. He goes for the finish and Max does exactly what he needs to do. Stay on his side so that pressure isn't being put through his chest, through his lungs and able to get out. He's back into a close guard and really now you've got to start talking about who's winning these rounds, you know. Potentially Max with that sweep in the first round, second round going to Owen. So it really could all be the play for in these last couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah. there's... Uh Certainly a lot going for this one, but I think perhaps you've got to lean the way of the constant top pressure of Owen Livesey. Lots for the judges to look at. Reminder, Dan Hardy, Andy Roberts and Neil Williams are your judges here this evening. It looks like Owen's dropped back into that head and arm position from the bottom to try and open up the guard. Mm. Yeah, the, the problem's going to be now for... Well, he's got his hips all the way out, goes for a leg entry. Yeah, the problem for Bigton is they're going to be very, very sweaty. Now. Nicely done. Very Beautiful nice. jump over the legs there. Yeah, can Bickerton invert and get something back? Yeah, sure can. Great job by Bickerton there. Back into this closed guard position. This closed guard position is such, like I said, you know, such a tough position to work. It and is, obviously this very open guard position he, right now. Max he, is looking for uh, Owen to open up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he can't look. I don't think Max can afford to sit here. I, you know, as we sort of said, it, you don't really know who's going to have the upper hand on the judges' scorecards. And I think Bickerton has to assume that he's perhaps on the losing side of it. So he's really got to take some chances here and start working. He's only got a minute and 15 seconds to do so. He's gone to the well on this two-on-one several times, but never managed to really get it going. You see just how slippery they are now. It's a, mm. Owen Livesey backs out, immediately looks to re-engage. Yeah, expect Owen that again, grab that, that front headlock position, maybe jumping over the legs there. Really likes that. Well, it's worked for him a couple of times. Oh, he's in the stand-up. Of course stand he wants up. in the stand-up. Max almost looking like he's trying to shoot oh, on the legs. Yeah. He's you engaging know, a little bit. Ma Ma Max is not a... Oh, there we yeah. go. Beautiful yeah. take yeah. down here. <laughs> you know, Max is, no, Max is no slouch in the stand-up department. You know, he's been doing a lot of wrestling training yeah, at I Legion, mean, but he just does not compare no. to the stand-up ability. I mean, look, props to Bickerton for coming forward yep. and, and trying to put it through there, but that... He got off pretty lightly for what was a standing <laughs> yeah. Kataguruma yeah. from uh, a Commonwealth Junior. He did champion. get thrown off the mat. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. A little bit <laughs> off the mat. <laughs> Final 20 seconds here. And again, Bickerton's going to come up and he's going to try and get a, a bite of the legs perhaps from the bottom. I mean, Bickerton is really pressing forwards the entire uh, he time. Is. He you absolutely know? is. And it does come down to when the things, the various act uh, passings of action right. happened and, in and the match. Yeah, you have to say, you know, we haven't had as clean an eye on those period yes. timings That's correct. As, as perhaps the, or as the judges will have for certain. Uh, so we're going to go to the judges' scorecards here for this one. A very enjoyable match from Owen Livesey and Max Bickerton. Take a look at a couple of replays, including, I'm sure, that standing Kataguruma. Here's that Kezugatami, and you see the crank as the hips get lifted off the mat. And look, I can tell you right now that if Max had stopped for one second and allowed his shoulders to go flat to the ground, that would have been right, over. His chest would have, you know, the compression yeah. would have sunk in and he'd never have regained the breath. But good work from him to escape this position. Let's go ahead and see who's going to come out the winner in this bout. This contest goes to distance, and we go to your judges for the decision, with all three seeing the bout the same in favor of your winner, Owen Livesey!
Probably a fair decision there from our judges, Owen Livesey. A lot of top pressure, had a couple of good dominant positions. Pressing forward, of course, had the standing category rumour as well. Good performance from him. He takes the bragging rights home to Carson Gracie Hull. We're going to move swiftly on here after a quick word from our sponsors. Three bouts still here to come on our preliminary card. This is bout number five. It is Tom Selamere taking on Oliver Cole. Good match between the US and Wales here. Our next match of this evening on Polaris is in the middleweight division. Introducing first, standing six feet two inches tall and weighed in at 75 kilograms even. Representing 10th Planet and Drake from the United States of America, Tom Selamir. So Tom Selamir makes his way to the mat here, representing a combined Team Drake, where he's been training for the last uh, six or seven months, but he does spend most of his time at 10th Planet Bethlehem over in Pennsylvania. Really good program run there by uh, Zach Maslany and J.M. Holland. Born originally in New Jersey. But uh, very proud of his work as uh, a fairly prolific referee over in uh, the Tri-State area. His referee finishes sub only and the ADCC trials. Very much looking forward to seeing what he can do here in his Polaris debut. And his opponent, standing five feet, 10 and a half inches tall and weighed in at 82.4 kilograms, representing Craig Ewers Academy from Wales, Ali Cole. His opponent for this one is 30-year-old Oliver Cole. He's a purple belt from Craig Ewers Academy in Cardiff. So it's Swansea versus Cardiff effectively for this one with a little bit of a US twist. He is an engineer in his day job, but he's been training jiu-jitsu for about 12 years. He's uh, an ex-Wales and uh, GBR freestyle wrestler. Competed in the Commonwealth Games, has uh, medaled multiple times at the British Open. So he thinks his wrestling and top pressure is going to get the job done, considering that Tom Selimore has said that leg attacks are his thing. I think we're going to see a bit of a clash of styles here. Thanks to Tatami Fightwear for sponsoring this event and several of our bouts this evening. And there it is, the guard pull quickly from Selimore. He manages to lock up close guard here. Ten minutes on the clock. 
I mean, probably a good uh, idea to pull guard against uh, a Commonwealth wrestler. Yeah, of course, uh, Craig Ewers Academy, very heavy judo pedigree as well. We're going to see Craig Ewers himself up in the third fight of our main card tonight. Don't forget, that's 7 p.m. UK time, 2 p.m. Eastern, live and exclusive on UFC Fight Pass. Thank you for joining us for these preliminary bouts. Josh Palmer, Tom Barlow, and Dan Strauss, Matt Side for you here at the ICC Wales. And it's Selima looking to work some of these grip breaks here. Yeah, he looks like he's jumping up to a high, high guard quite frequently, so you might see some of that rubber guard style 10th planet jiu-jitsu going on. Yeah, I'd be interested to know what brought him over to, um, to uh, Wales for seven or eight months to train at Chris Reese Academy and Team Drake. I haven't had a chance to ask him before the event. But uh, the jiu-jitsu program over there in that part of Pennsylvania with 10th Planet is growing all the time between uh, 10th Planet Bethlehem and 10th Planet Allentown, where, of course, uh, Polaris competitor John Thor Blank has his school now. Yeah, so just uh, some grip fighting from inside the closed guard here. Like I was saying in that last match, the closed guard can be an awkward position, no gi, because... You know, if the person doesn't want to do anything from on top, it's hard to get them doing anything if the person doesn't want to do much from underneath. And I think you're right. I think, uh, I think Selimir is going to try and bring his opponent down and try and lock up some of that 10th planet rubber guard sort of stuff. But at the same time, I think his opponent's a little bit wise to that and it's probably not going to be going down and allowing his posture yeah, to I be mean, broken. We did see the very first exchange. We did see Selimir open those legs as though he was going to try and jump across for some sort of leg entry or inversion under into the legs. You know, the question really comes down to, you know, if, if nothing happens from here, are we going to see Selimir open up those legs and switch to an open guard tactic instead? So tell me this, you know, the, the, the frame of Selimir, he's got very long legs. He, he's clearly taller than, than Cole. How much harder is it to open a, a close guard of someone with, with limb length like that? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a lot more difficult. Obviously, you can't get the same pressure against the ankles. But at the moment, Oli doesn't really seem to be doing anything. No. Uh, he's just fighting the grips, like controlling the grips. You know, there's not, not any pressure against the ankles. There's no impetus to trying to stand up like this. Um, he looks like he's trying to get that one knee in the middle, a very old school pass or old school break that we used to see a lot of. Yeah, I mean, if you can't control the hips, the leg just rides up the front of that, uh, that quadricep and, you yeah. know, it, the, the frame is, is not really there anymore. Yeah, one, not only is it... Can be, it'd be harder to break the legs of a longer opponent from this closed guard position. Um, but also, it's a lot less stress through the legs. If you have shorter legs and the opponent's a little bit wider, then holding on to this position for long periods of time throughout a 10-minute match can be quite draining and fatiguing on the legs. When you have these long legs, there's a lot less pressure going through that just statically. So uh, he, he could hold this position for 10 minutes, no problem, if he wanted to. I hope he doesn't. But. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully the refs will have... Uh a bit of drive to split them up here and force some, some stalling uh, warnings, perhaps. Oli Geddes overseeing this bout. Yeah, I mean, it does seem to be a battle of uh, Selma trying to get that posture broken. And if he can't do that, it looks like a lot of his game isn't going to be effective at the moment now, against Cole. Now, look, we're, we're through the first... This is an interesting one for the scoring because we're through the first period here. And under Polaris rules, y you can't score a draw. So somebody has to win that mm. first period. And it's a, a pretty... Whoever gets it, it's a pretty cheap win versus, you know, achieving a dominant position and, and all that sort of thing. And uh, trying to make it a little rough now is Ollie Cole as he finally gets the guard open. Yeah, he just now needs to stay out of that position. And hopefully he's not too, uh, too te yeah. um, tentative to try and do that, you know. Yeah, we almost tried a, a bit of a kind of shot X pass there. He's going to body lock pass here. Oh, and he's yes. backed away quick. Well done. Don't allow him to get back to that closed guard position. That, we, we don't want to see that. Nobody wants to see, you know, this closed guard position without anything going on. Closed guard is absolutely great when there's a lot of attacks. The legs are coming up. They're opening. They're closing. The person on top's working really hard to get out. But just a static closed guard battle is not something we want to see. Yeah, it looks like uh, Tom at the moment is trying to get that inside butterfly hook. Maybe use the cannabis Sammy entry. Yeah, it's interesting that... It I couldn't tell if they were talking to each other, but this is, you know. I, I actually think Ollie's asking for him to stand up again. <laughs> I think that's what the Ray was telling there, Ollie to do. Oh, and again, Cole dives straight forward into this closed guard. 
Yeah, I mean, that was almost a better position for Tom, though. He did have some attachment to the upper body. You know, he could put, fall back into the, uh, the omoplata position, potentially. Maybe that, that, that rubber guard. But now there's distance between them. There's a separation where he's not going to be able to do that. Yeah, I'm very surprised to see Oli allow, uh, allow his opponent to drag him straight back into close guard like that. But, it, it, you know, like you said, Josh, it is so difficult. How do you score this? Because it's one of these things where when you're in this position, that just the, the, the mechanics of this close guard no-gi position, which is to do anything, you need to open up. And when you're competing and you don't want to lose anything and you know that any little mistake could be the end of the match for you on the judges' scorecards potentially, what do you do? Do you open up? Do you try and get something both from on top and underneath? So it, it can be a really awkward position. Yeah, Oli Cole is having a uh, fairly lengthy discussion with his corner. This is nice. Yeah, he's got oh, just had a had a good chance there when the guard was open, and this is a good overhook by Fasella here. Off, but yeah. just yeah, this is so hard to keep a grip going. I'd really just like to see him try and stand and force. I mean, look, he's got the wrestling pedigree. He, he probably knows he can scramble quite effectively. Yeah. So let's stand up here I and agree. at least let's force him to try and invert onto a leg and we'll scramble out. Yeah, yeah. I like that. You know, I agree. This this trying to open on the knees, it just isn't particularly effective. You know, you can, you can see every time Selimor just just slides his hips over the top and the, Ollie can't maintain that pressure. Yeah, we're into the third and final period now. So someone else had to win that second period. It's really difficult. It's really difficult to score this because really nothing is happening. They're just grit battling from inside the closed guard. Ne yeah, neither guy's giving anything up. Yeah, I mean, we had that brief period where Oli was uh, open and free, a bit like this, and he was trying to create some, a little bit of passing in those body locks, but just couldn't get anything yeah, going. Then you, you have to wonder, are the judges going to see it, that it was it was Selimer who slowed it down again and stalled it out, you know, because he just went straight back to that closed guard position. I mean, it's, you know, the judges do have a slightly different style. Oh, oh. we might not have to worry about the judges no, after all. See. So he's got a crooked guard here. He's trying to... I, I believe this is actually in. a triangle yeah, that he's locked up into. That triangle into. is, is a much stronger option. I think he should go for that. Oh, there he gets it. the tap in mere seconds once he locks it up. Well, I've got to see that entry again. He uh, tried to cartwheel guard pass yeah, straight that was, into the triangle. Simply put, that was a huge blunder from Oli Cole there, going straight into a triangle, and fair play to Selimir, who just managed to capitalize on his opponent's mistake. Yeah, I mean, it, it looked like he didn't go to lock the triangle up straight away. He kind of held that position to try and drag the arm back in. I mean, let's take yeah. a look at the finish here. Oli, Oli's defense definitely was a little bit slow there. Oh, well, that was very much at the end. Let's see if we can get a little bit earlier on one of the replays, perhaps. So well, we'll take a look again in a moment. Let's go ahead and get the hand raised of Tom Selimir. This contest ended 7 minutes 33 seconds into the match. Declaring your winner by submission with a triangle arm bar, Tom Selimir. Well, a victorious Tom Selimir. We are going to take one quick look back. We, got, we want to see the entry at, is what we want to see. At the finish, I mean, that was right at the end. He really got a, a good bite on the arm very quickly. Again, those long legs and uh, big frame allowing pretty significant hip extension very quickly indeed. And here's the go. entry. And it was, yeah, it was just a cartwheel guard pass. It was too low to the side. Yeah, and it was just... It, you go for these things, they are a bit of a risk, but he was trying to open up the position and just one small mistake like that and, you know, capitalised on it beautifully and game over. So two more bouts coming your way. Let's go ahead and say a quick word from our sponsors and we will be back very shortly.
penultimate bout of our preliminary card here live on YouTube. Don't forget main card coming up 7 p.m. UK time live and exclusive on UFC Fight Pass. But this is the heavyweights. Alid Reese taking on Ash Amos. Another all Welsh clash to look forward to. Let's go ahead and make the official introductions. Polaris 18 now moves on to the heavyweight division. We introduce first at standing at six feet three inches tall and weighed in at 101.3 kilograms. Representing Pedro Bessa BJJ from Wales, Aled Rees. So this is a heavyweight bout in the gi. And it's Alid Reese, 28 years old, representing Pedro Bessa, BJJ, and Combat Training Center, Ronda. He is currently a brown belt, originally from Merthyr Tidville and the Valleys. He's a physiotherapist in his day job. Been training for six years now, has won the Welsh and English Open, the British Championships. But he has got a tough test ahead of him in Ash Amos. Should be a very exciting heavyweight contest, this one. And now, introducing his opponent, standing 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighed in at 103.1 kilograms. Representing Amos Martial Arts from Wales, Ash Amos! Ash Amos making his way to the mat here. He is the, of course, owner and head instructor of Amos Martial Arts in Abergavenny. He's been training for about eight years now. Very prolific competitor. We've seen him a few times before on Polaris. And gents, you've got to say credit to him for taking this match because, you know, brown belts versus black belts. Tough to see the upside uh, often for the black belts. Yeah, I mean, as Ash was coming up, though, he was regularly like a blue belt fighting black belts. Yes, he was. Um, <laughs> you know, it's very, very common for him to be in that situation, so maybe he's paying it back. Fight. So, touch of hands here. Blue gi for Ash Amos, black gi for Alan Reese. And we are going to start standing on the feet here. Yeah, Ash has uh, got, got a pretty switch. strong <laughs> judo pedigree. <laughs> So I think this is a theme that we've seen over the last couple of matches where someone is uh, particularly good in the stand-up and the other person decided not to find out. Yeah, Reese, the taller of the two competitors here, looking to work some spider guard. I don't think we've actually seen Ash Amos compete in the gi on Polaris. I think all his matches have been yeah. no gi so far. Yeah, you see Ash just trying to stuff that gi pad through. Good job, though, from Allard to, uh, to avoid that. It would have been a very bad position for him to get caught in. Yeah, and you can see he's working those cuff grips here as Amos sits very heavy on the ankles. He's going to look to try and sprawl out and pass, but he's going to give up full guard here and nice grip over on the arm. He can also switch back for the belt grip, which you saw him looking for for a moment. Easily stripped by Amos, who looks to stand up into a knee cut, though, and he's going to try and stop the guard coming back in. Yeah, I mean, it was good by Alad, you know, he used that, that threat of the armbar to create a little bit of space and get back to a better position for him. Looks like he's going to try and possibly elevate Ash here. Yeah, he potentially going deep, De La Hiva. very nice sweep getting up on top. Ash didn't Ooh, really right. fight that sweep at all, Was seemed quite happy to well, end think, up on his back Yeah, there. I don't think he'll be too happy about the head pressure potentially here, but it's a big single hook sweep attempt. Uses it to try and re-guard, but uh, fighting for that staple on the leg, you see the right... Uh, instep of Reese just coming over the top as he tries to keep that leg driven down by the pant cuff. Nice sprawl to try and clear that hook as well. And almost passing over the top here, all the way towards the back. Very nice. Yeah, really nice little bit of pummeling for the guard work, for, uh, for the uh, guard passing, sorry, from Alan Reese. Amos having to defend the back attack here, and uh, there's one hook. Yeah, actually going to look to try and go flat towards the ground. Yeah, try and turn back in the half guard from here. Yeah, Alid's trying to force him over, it looks like, maybe set up the back. Yeah, he's got to strip some of those grips away. Going to go back into a heavy knee cut. Hasn't quite got a strong underhook, though, or, or gi grip to, with which to control that uh, top side of Amos's body. Yeah, it looked though. like he was trying to use the elbow inside the arm as a, as a way to replace the underhook. Ash looking very, very 
relaxed. Yeah, there's no urgency to the things that yeah. he's doing. Even a little bit, dare I say, too relaxed here. Well, there's still a long way to go. We've got about 40 seconds till the judges have to render their decision on the first period. Here we go, Ash using that lapel. Very nice break there from Alid. Yeah, Straight around to side control. It's a good guard pass there. That's going to score heavily for him, and there's only about 20 seconds left now, or 25 seconds left. That's probably going to give the first period to Alid Reese with the, uh, the sweep and then a couple of near passes, of course, ending with the actual pass. Yeah. See him trying to kill that near side elbow by switching the hips down. Yeah, he's feeding that lapel around towards the Bravo grip as well. This can be very, very difficult for Ash because it acts like the underhook and it allows Alid to have one arm completely free. Yeah, let's see if he's going to, what sort of choke he's going to feed for from here. Now it looks like he's trying to feed his own lapel underneath. Well, there is a very nice choke you can uh, obviously get there. Easy kind of cowboy loop choke. Yeah, he's yeah, brought I... that round. Nice connection there. This is a nasty position. Yeah, I love this choke. He's going to try and sprawl very heavily, but uh, good work from Amos. It could still be underneath the neck, though. It is still it underneath is. the very neck. Very nice. Oh, oh beautiful posture the on the back of the head. He's forcing the scramble, and Amos, I think, perhaps lucky to get straight back into it. Yeah, straight back to it. Straight back to it. Yeah, watch him, watch him block the hip and then straighten that right arm. There you go. That's what puts all the pressure on. This is going to be strong. done. Ton of pressure here. Oh, there we go. It's a, it's a beautiful nice. submission. Lovely work from Alid Reese. Very, very composed indeed. Yeah, great performance by Alid. Ash kind of just looked like he never, he never really he never got, got into going. it. Yeah. Yeah, he, he usually comes in quite intense. He's usually the aggressor. He's usually the one trying to get the takedown pass guard. And he just looked like it was a, you know, it was a warm-up role instead of on the big stage. And you know, Alid came in, was looking a lot more intense, and took it to Ash, and you know, got got a beautiful finish there. Let's take a look at uh, the submission here. And this was the setup. He feeds his own lapel all the way across. And you see, this is what he does. He turns, he straightens the arm. That creates the pressure on the back of the neck. And Amos was almost able yeah. to scramble out the first time. But uh, yeah, Ash bridged as, he, uh, as Alid was setting it up. So it kind of went across the chin. You can see it there. And he was able to turn out of it. And the second time, it was just in so much deeper and tighter. You can see as he spins, there's no bridge. And you can yeah. see it cut right across the neck. Kept him flat, and it was blocking the hip very effectively on the left side as well. Never really got off the flat of his back. And there's a, another good angle of it. Excellent win for Alid Reese here over Black Belt Ash Amos. Let's go ahead and get his hand raised. This contest came to a halt three minutes 55, declaring your winner by submission with a lapel bravo, Alid Reese. Well, we have one more preliminary bout coming your way shortly. It is the main event of our undercard, Adam Adshead, taking on Josh Williams. All of that next after a few words from our sponsors.
So this is the final bout of your undercard live here and free on YouTube. Adam Adshead from Factory BJJ, 37 years old, taking on Josh Williams. Not Ash Williams, Josh Williams, 29 years old from right here in Wales. Let's get the official introductions underway. Our final contest in the prelims is live on YouTube from Wales and is in the lightweight division. Introducing first, standing five feet nine inches tall and weighed in at 68.8 kilograms, representing Factory BJJ from the United Kingdom, Adam Atshed. So Adam's ad head, uh, Adam ad head, sorry, makes his way to the mat here. He is, of course, the owner and head instructor of Factory BJJ up in Stockport. He's been teaching for uh, or training for 17 years now. Lots of uh, impressive titles. Silver at uh, the IBJJF Gi Euros in 2019. He, of course, has competed here before on Polaris 11. Uh, picked up a good win there. Going to be cornered by. Lloyd Cooper, who we're going to see up on the main card a little bit later. This is actually his fourth appearance here at Polaris, so very accustomed to the stage. And now introducing his opponent, standing five feet, 10 inches tall, and weighed in at 69.1 kilograms, representing Draig from Wales, introducing Josh Williams. His opponent tonight is Josh Williams, representing Team Drake. He is 29 years old and a black belt. He is, of course, the twin brother of the man you're going to see in our main event later, the triple Polaris champ, Ash Williams. Josh Williams is perhaps flying a little bit under the radar on the competitive scene compared to his brother, because he trained about the same amount of time, but did stop for a period in the middle. But he is the head coach of uh, his own gym here alongside Team Drake. He's been training over 10 years. He, of course, has his brother and Chris Reese in the corner tonight. He thinks it's the level of uh, his training partners is what's going to give him the edge here tonight. But either way, this is a tremendously compelling matchup. Thank you to Jiu Jitsu X for sponsoring this bout and the event here tonight. Go, of course, check out all their Jiu Jitsu instructional content available for purchase on their app. It's a double guard pull effectively here. The elusive double guard pull. Yeah, it looks like Adam's trying to pull him into the single leg X. Yeah, so I was going to go with uh, black gi for Josh Williams and black <laughs> gi for Adam Adshead, but we'll say shaved head for Adam Adshead. Moustache yeah. for uh, Josh. <laughs> yeah, I believe that Josh has grown the moustache specifically so people could tell him apart from his brother. His brother's grown a moustache as well, you realize this? Then uh, scratch that. <laughs> Maybe it's Movember. No, that's definitely it the is, reason. I thought that indeed. that was him. <laughs> both grown a moustache. Uh, so, uh, it's fighting for some legs here from this seated guard pool position. Yeah, Adam looks like he's trying to jump around the corner into a leg drag here. Momentarily coming up on top. So you've got to think here, you know, when, obviously when you're talking about points, events, if someone was to come up from a double guard pool position, then they would score points now, I think it is. Originally it was an advantage. It's I think this still an advantage, I believe. It's just an yeah. advantage still. Adam's looking at a toe holder uh, briefly yeah, there. Yeah, got a little bite of it. you got to, you got to wonder how the judges would score if someone took the onus of coming to a top position. Because, you know, how much can you do? There we go. I, mean, I, think the, I think the judges would look very favorably on it. I think they'll look favorably on that work from Josh Williams there yep. as he looks to hop over. Yeah, he Try got and secure a, a dominant position on top. He got into a great position. They managed to get chest to chest, and it looked like he was slipping through towards a triangle or a more platter hip briefly. Yeah, X guard entry for Ad's head as he looks to work to the back. Adam did give us a fun fact for contrary. He said, uh, you know, Josh and, and Ash are twins, but uh, so is he, actually. He just uh, doesn't have a brother that trains. Mm. Williams looking to come up on top again here. Yeah, he's always trying to step over that cross. Almost gets it, goes to the front headlock position. And Adam just sits back into guard momentarily. 
Yeah, looks to try and sweep, but not able to. He's going to elevate again. And let's see if he can get heavy hip pressure now from Williams. He's got a much better staple with that right leg. Yeah, Adam's looking to re-pummel his legs, get back to a better guard position, I think. At the moment, he really just has that kind of one inside hook. You see him stepping in the neck there. Yeah, Williams was trying to, to use that shoulder to beat the inside uh, knee position, but he goes to try and smash it down instead there. Now he's got head and arm connection, but not able to do anything with it. Lovely sweep from Ad's head as he comes up on top. Oma Plata entry briefly from Williams. Nice jump over, and this could be onto the leg as well here. Oh, and that's a grimace on the face from Ad's head. Clearly that's... Uh, I actually Leg think Adam's was a little grimacing deep. for about the last two minutes. <laughs> have I missed that? It's, yeah. part of the, it's part of the game plan. Yeah. I think it might have something to do with his gum shield. <laughs> it's, it's, it's to intimidate his opponent, actually. Yeah, he's showing the intensity as he does exactly. <laughs> all the techniques. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, that was a lovely little uh, re-entry from, from Williams there. Yeah, Josh was trying to pull him into the armor platter again, it looked like, briefly. Bit of a stare straight down the camera there. Yeah, well, uh, his corner are right behind the cameraman. So, uh, yeah, I think that was looking at the corner, trying to <laughs> decipher the meaning of the, the, the coaching. So Williams again trying to drive this right knee through. Ad's head's going to try and feed that hook inside and, uh, and isolate that leg. Does so again, looking to go into X guard, see if he can get the extension away. Yeah, Adam doing a really nice job of stopping Josh from hitting these passes, but. Just a reminder that uh, after this bout coming up in uh, about an hour's time now, live on UFC Fight Pass is the main card for Polaris 18. Of course, Ash Williams, Paolo Miao to look forward to alongside AJ Agazam and Jed Hugh. Of course, Eagle Tanabe and Tommy Langaka is a match I am sure we will discuss at length as well. So much to look forward to. Join us at 7 p.m. UK time, 2 p.m. Eastern, live and exclusive on UFC Fight Pass. It's quite strange that Adam is so insistent on not coming up on top. There's been a few opportunities where he's had the opportunity to take top position and effectively score a sweep and just choosing to stay on his back. Yeah, I was thinking exactly the same thing. He's it's been some really strong sweeping positions then always fallen back for the legs. Yeah, you've got to assume that his strategy is very much based around submitting with a leg lock off of his back and uh, and not looking to change up that plan. He's taken kind of taken a top position, very uncommitted top position for now. It's going to be interesting to see whether he sits back down. Yeah, which it looks go. like he's done again. I mean, I mean the, judges, you... the judges are still going to be scoring sweeps. I mean, I appreciate yeah. that we, you know, we, we want submissions. The judges are looking for aggression and who's trying to actually finish the fight. But at the same time, you score some good positions with some sweeps. You might as well bank those points and move on. 100%. Yeah, you see Adam trying to pull that leg back inside again. And he has to be careful here. You can go. Josh could sneak around the corner towards the back. Yeah, Williams has come very close to, to just popping over the top of this, uh, this right knee a couple of times now. Yeah, if, jo if Josh can get that knee down towards the ground and smash the hips over towards his right, he's going to be in a good position. But Adam's doing a good job of just defending it, getting that leg up and into a more traditional X guard now. Yeah, Ad's head uh, inverts, comes back to a seated guard. And Williams, I feel like starting to pick the pace up a little bit here. Yeah. And then Josh is, uh, seems to have gone back down towards the bottom. Yeah, we're uh, approaching the end of the second period here, and this one perhaps a little bit harder to score. Yeah. I mean, Adam has had some, some very good kind of sweeps where he's come up on top, and he's had a few near, uh, you know, attempts at foot locks and leg locks and different things like that. But then Josh is obviously, he seems to be getting a little bit deeper on the passing positions. We had that, that Omar platter earlier as well. So it's a, it's a close match. Again, Williams uh, actually making an effort to come up on top here off the seated position. 
it, it, it just changed the sort of aesthetic of how the match looks when you have someone who's happy to take top position, try and get a pass for a little while and then maybe sit back down into, a, into that double guard position. Whereas Adam is just refusing to do that. He does not want to come on top. He doesn't even want to attempt to try and pass the guard. He's just looking to attack these legs off of the back. Yeah, and it, it does seem to me, I'm not sure if this is actually the case, but it does seem like Josh is being yeah, the more aggressive exactly, in that sense. Exactly. Well, he absolutely is. Like, from the know. perspective of it. Exactly. It really does look that way when you have someone who is making that transition and someone who's half making that well, transition that, sitting back you know, down. That's what we were saying. He's banking the points for, you know, here, I'm making the effort. Yeah. See me make the effort. Okay, now I can sit back down because if my opponent's not going to come up, then it, yep. it's of zero consequence. Exactly, yeah. yeah. There, there's no risk to sitting backwards to do something if you know your opponent's not going to capitalize with a sweep. Uh, now Josh is getting into a pretty good position here. Looks like he's collapsed that top leg down quite well. Yeah, trying to drive that knee all the way through to the mat, and he's forced a bit of recovery from Adzed, who has to scramble, and he does so back to this same position we've seen a few times, deep collar grip. Yeah, I would have liked Josh to like keep going with that attack a little bit longer. Right, and see if he could consolidate. That yeah, you know, and use that time where Adam's kind of resetting to continue his attack. <laughs> Looks like he's going towards an esteem lock, forcing Adam to turn, oh, and now Josh is on the hips. Yeah, this is a much better attempt to pass here. and Good I recovery from Adam, again, back into butterfly guard. Yeah, again, Williams tried to float all the way over to, to mount, perhaps. He could have, I think, perhaps sprawling to a side control could have been a... A safer option for him, but uh, Adzhead gets the regard nonetheless, and he looks to go to work on that outside leg again. He's go it looks like he was trying to go belly down on that footlock, but Josh was just able to stay up and uh, not let his hip get dropped down. And now Josh is in quite tight. Looking to long step around and pass. Looks like a he good might have passing pass, position. Yeah. Adam's just top shin is defending. Forced to turtle, going oh, towards the arm. Beautifully the done. Arm, and he's got a good entry here. Both... Both, are both legs over? I can't quite tell. No, I think he's got like a, the K, K armbar position. Switching Might back to the triangle. triangle. Now he has. Let's see. That's he's on. Got that's the break. on. That's done. There's the hip extension, and Josh Williams gets the submission with only 40 seconds left on the clock. It is another win for Team Drag. And the Welshman stands victorious in our final preliminary bout here at Polaris and embrace with his brother, who of course gets his own shot in the main event later tonight. Yeah, beautifully done. A, a very slow match, you know, a lot of uh, grip fighting and jostling for that position. But when he saw his opportunity, immediately latching onto I that mean, arm. It was, it, it was a necessary tempo change. And, and Absolutely. That got, that got the job done. I mean, let's take a look here as he, you can see he goes all the way over and immediately yeah. jumps onto it. You can see him attack the arm before he starts the movement. He sees the arm first. It looked like at full speed when we were watching it live. It looked like the position came first and the arm came after, but he actually saw the arm and took the position to finish it and then managed to work his way through to that finish, that strength position and get the tap. Beautifully done. With 45 seconds left, your lightweight division contest came to a halt, declaring your winner by submission with an arm bar, Josh Williams. Josh Williams takes the armbar win here in our final preliminary match at Polaris 18. Coming up later, it is, of course, in about uh, just over, under an hour's time, it is our main card. We've got uh, Lloyd Cooper taking on Tom Barry. That's an exciting no-gi clash. Leon Lahman and Brent Jenkins, really interesting uh, style of uh, in, both of them playing an inverted game. That's a, a great gi match to look forward to. UFC veteran Stephen Ray is going to take on very prolific judo champion Craig Ewers. Uh, a bout that most people are touting, perhaps, for bout of the night. Igor Tanabe, the 21-year-old prodigy from Japan, is going to be taking on the Viking Tommy Langaka. Our co-main event was originally a title bout between Jed Hugh and our champion, Edwin Najmi. Of course, Najmi forced to withdraw, so AJ Agazam is going to step back into the Polaris Arena once more. And then our main event, Paolo Miao, has made the trip over from the US to take on Polaris triple champ, Ash Williams. Lots to look forward to. 
Thank you very much for joining us once again on this preliminary card. Don't forget UFC Fight Pass live and exclusive at 7 p.m. UK time, 2 p.m. Eastern. From myself, Josh Palmer, Tom Barlow and Dan Strauss, we will see you shortly. I'm in the big leagues, Tony don't miss me. Ballin' like Houston, ayy, feelin' like Whitney. I need a bag, bruh, send it too quickly. I'm making his dog, like I'm in the big leagues. Told him that I gotta go, dog. I'm riding a road, y'all. I think that I'm back in my bag now. So I need that go, y'all. Got hits when he throw in the fastball. Just too quick for it. Peeling off like the whip orange. Seen the effort, it's piss poor. I got too much, I gotta tend to. Car payments and the rent due. Told y'all that I'm six foot, but with the money stabbing, I'm ten to. Too much that I've been through, so I put it all in that rear view. Clean money in a black whip. Got all problems with the friends new. Yeah, I'm in the big leagues. Told her don't miss me. Ballin' like Houston. Ayy, feeling like Whitney. Yeah, I need a bag, bruh. Send it through quickly. I'm making his dog. Like I'm in the big leagues. Yeah, I told him I'ma hit it out of stands. I deserve another hundred bands. I deserve another hundred fans. Told him this was always in the plans. I just did it cause they said I can't. Blowing euros when I'm down in France. Labels asking how I build a brand. Told him put a check up in my hands. Who I got time, no cap. Made a few checks, but they all in the raps. Had a few friends, but they suck in the past. I don't even trip when I'm thinking about that. Hopped in the whip and we all in black. Shawty wanna ride to the hop in the back. Zero to 100, seen a rap on the dash. Dad, kitchen up, dog, I'm